We have three different types of wood, although we're really primarily using two. So one is ash, white ash. It's uh, a stable, um, relatively uh, dense and rot and pest resistant uh, soft wood. Um, so it is not technically a hard wood. Um, in rigging, uh, you really use hard wood only when it's needed, only when necessary. We obviously have a lot of these in the rig. A lot of them are aloft or trying to bring the center of gravity down. Um, so when we can and where it makes sense, we're using ash. This is the standard, uh, this ash. This has a, a historical precedent. Um, this is the type of wood that was used most often in Northern Europe for making blocks, um, even all the way into the 20th century. But in the early 17th century, Actually, even in the Viking Age, they were using a lot of ash. Uh, that's something that Joe and I learned from our, our visit to Denmark, and certainly our vi visit from Scandinavia, all their blocks are ash on the Vasa. So that's, that's neat, having that continuity. Ash, that's the standard. It's local, it's easy to work, it's beautiful, it's stable. Osage Orange is what we are using, where we have blocks that have a consistent high load being applied to them, or they're in a position on the vessel where they might be vulnerable to uh, a, a little bit of an added wear and tear. Maybe they're blocks that might get kicked around, or they're blocks that are um, uh, a little bit more dynamic. They might be running systems where you're, you're, you're bringing a block from one position to another, and it's just getting hands on it. It might get beaten up a little bit. It's very pest resistant, it's rot resistant, it's stable, it's super dense, it's really workable. Most people who use it, it becomes their favorite wood pretty quickly. This is not perfect for every block because it would be excessive to use this on every block in the rig. Um, you'd get a lot of added weight. Also, in, in some cases, it can become a, um, there's a, there's a safety aspect of concern of a block maybe hitting someone in the head, so these bullet blocks, which will be uh, used for the uh, head sole sheets. You might not want something excessively heavy because these blocks are going to be sort of in that uh, around head height for a lot of people. And they're also going to be whipping around. No need to have Osage blocks in that application. Uh, we have less Osage blocks. All of the dead eyes are Osage. Again, these have a consistent uh, load applied to them. These are going to be tensioned with the shrouds, so these take the place of a turnbuckle or another tensioning system, a more modern tensioning system. It's fantastic wood. Where We have a little bit of live oak. These, uh, literally, we have a very little bit, only two blocks in the rig are live oak. These have um, material, uh, in this case a pennant, which is basically a fixed length of rigging that supports a running system that splices into this end of the block, which you could call becket of the block, and then the dead end of the running system that goes through this, uh, this shiv here, which is the lift, will actually splice into this end. On all the other blocks where you have, um, when, whenever you have a block being supported in the rig, it has a strop going around it, which is a piece of rope. And if the block ever broke or shattered, that whole rigging system would be caught by the strop, which is the piece of rope that traces around the block. So if this block broke, you'd have this piece of rope trapping it. But this does not have that. There's no strop that goes around this block. And the live oak, although it's, it's, it's uh, less stable than ash and osage, which is why we're not using it everywhere, and it's heavy, it's really heavy, the live oak is not prone to splitting. It has such a mixed grain and um, really interwoven grain, like, like a lot of oak, but the live oak especially, it's very durable in that way. 